Prepare to get violated. Here's your look at the new McFarlane Toys Spawn the Violator. Eldest of the five siblings known as the Philibiat brothers, Violator is a powerful demon of hell who worked for Malbolgia, able to shapeshift possessed animals and humans, as well as an array of other powers. He was sent to Earth in order to train Al Simmons when he became a hellspawn. Violator likes to do things his own way and often antagonizes, manipulates, and gets in the way of Al Simmons on every possible occasion. To even his own detriment of being at odds with Malbolgia and his brothers, Violator is self-serving and vindictive and a major pain in Spawn's ass. Let me just start first by saying that Violator is a pretty large figure, and it's probably a little harder for me simply just to say that for you guys to be able to digest just how big this figure is. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring a couple of size comparisons in first, and we're going to bring in one of my favorite figures of all time. If you guys have been longtime viewers, you probably already know what figure I'm going to bring in. But to the outside new individuals here coming out and checking out this channel, this is the Spawn Classic Series 20 Violator 3. It still is one of my all-time favorite figures. I would say, still say, even though it's dated on articulation, it easily makes my top 10 favorite figures of all time. And I brought this one in, obviously, Violator to Violator, so you can see really how much bigger the new Violator is. The older Violator, I think, probably goes up to about his elbows. Okay, you want some other comparisons? Let's bring in some light, slightly bigger figures that we've just recently got from McFarlane Toys. Here he is next to the Snyder Cut Steppenwolf. Steppenwolf, I would say, probably goes to about, what, the shoulders or so of Violator. Another comparison as well we can bring in. Just off to the background here, we can bring in also King Shark. Let's just move everything over so you can see. King Shark, I guess, again, goes probably to about his shoulders. And yeah, not only is he a tall figure, but he's a very beefy looking figure as well. Now, the figure does come included with a display stand. I have to say... Of the things, at least, that I like about the figure, I find that the display stand is a bit laughable. I guess, if anything, it serves as sort of a stabilizing base that you can attach to at least one of his feet. But it would be impossible, again, judging by the size of it, to be able to plant both feet on top of this little tiny display stand. It just so happens, by the way, to be the exact same display stand that we get with the DC Multiverse line, other than just the fact that they brand spawn along the bottom of it. I, again, I almost feel like the figure doesn't need to come include with the display stand. I mean, I don't have really any difficult time getting him to stand. If it seems at times like he's going to wobble a little bit, I simply just have to compensate with his hand, his feet and just move his ankles around just a little bit. And the figure stands perfectly fine. But just in case you are curious, yes. On the underside of his feet, he has two peg holes that I guess if you wanted to, you could take one of the, dis one of the feet, attach it to the display stand. I don't know. I don't really think it helps or makes the problem worse. It sort of is just there. I mean, yeah, if they want to come out with mega-sized figures, they come out maybe with mega-sized display stands. I guess one other thing, too, that it does bring to the table, because it does have the branding of Spawn on there, at least that when you're looking at it, as small as it may be, at least you know what line it belongs to, if you don't already recognize Violator. Okay, so let's get a closer look now at Violator. We'll start things off first with his head sculpt. It's one of the things I always liked about Violator was the design of his face. These side horns that stick out from the side of his head, and not to mention the one long one that sticks out from the top of its spine. It also has the notable overhanged jaw, which is actually really neat the way that they've done this on the figure. While you can still pose it further down if you want to, it does give you then the opportunity to be able to see the inside work that they've done to this figure. McFarlane has really been knocking it out of the park lately when it comes to not only the DC Multiverse stuff that they've been doing, but also the other lines that they've been covering. But you can really definitely see, like they wanted to put a lot of additional attention to detail when it comes to the Spawn property stuff. And Violator, I mean, you can just see the amount of work to sculpt this thing from scratch. I love the way that they've got all these jagged little teeth that none of them really match with one next to it. I mean, they're all sort of just these randomly placed teeth lodged into the side of his jaw. Now, again, you can have the jaw hanging down like this. I've always been a big fan myself of having the jaw more closer to his face. We can see how it really overhangs like this. 
His eyes, of course, consist of sort of that honeycomb look. It kind of almost looks like fly eyes, really. And the coloring that they've used to it, it's hard to describe. It's almost like a bit of a pinkish metallic red and outlined so very nicely with some additional airbrushing of black. It really helps to bring those eyes and maybe really make them stand out, considering that the head sculpt and the rest of the body is using such a dark coloring of gray. Also, the additional sculpting that they've done to the horns. It almost looks like there's decay in the horns themselves, all these little holes on the sides, like craters. They've also painted it not only just the single singular black and brown, but also you can see that they've painted in just touching the end of it with some additional white. In some cases, it actually looks like there's like little skulls that I can see. I think it's more so just my eyes playing tricks on me. But again, again I love that they've added these little holes, these pock marks actually on the sides or embedded into the horns themselves. That's really, really neat the way that they've done that. He's a really big figure. I mean, obviously that goes without saying. Um, he's a little bit obviously proportioned differently than the original Violator that would have been more slender to the limbs, slender to the legs, and a more bigger, sl sort of slightly larger head. In fact, again, just to do a quick comparison of where we sort of started things from when it came to Violator's design, just getting him to stand here. Again, when it came to the original Violator, Violator's body was always really very slender, slender limbs, slender legs. And I really, again, I like the design of the way that Violator looked. i not bothered at all the fact that they gave him a lot more size, girth, and muscular frame. Again, we'll, I'm almost even considered going back and re-reviewing that guy at some point, but I, I know I'm missing the heart he came included with. Anyways, though, picking up the figure once again, you can see, again, all the work that they put into this figure. While there is, yes, a lot of gray on gray, it's not too off-putting either because there is the opportunities that they've added in there, some additional dark airbrushing of black, so it's not, again, just all that gray. And even, like, the spikes that stick out from his body also get afforded some additional white. Again, I really feel like they've put a lot of additional work and care into producing Violator here. This is going to be the start of many spawn figures that we're going to be looking at here on this channel, but I couldn't pass the chance to pick up Violator, as again, he's been one of my all-time favorite comic villains. Even like the sculpting on the back of his body where the spine is sticking out, these protruding bones, again, almost look like they've got a bit of a decay happening on them. All the texture work that they've incorporated kind of looks like an alligator skin in, in such a way. I mean, kind of even when you're looking at it from the back, reminds me a bit like Doomsday, the way they've sculpted it with all the sticking out spikes like this. Now, despite the fact he does have such a large frame like this, you would almost even think that he would then sacrifice and suffer a bit when it comes to him standing. Despite he does have slightly smaller looking feet, which again, just as nicely sculpted as the rest of his body, he seems to be able to balance himself pretty good, actually, on these small-sized toes. You see the sculpt work that they've even done on the underside of the feet like this. One good thing that we'll talk more about when we look at the articulation on the figure is that they've actually ratcheted the joints on the bottoms of the feet. So it certainly helps to make the feet remain tight over, over the time that you have it on display. It's not going to develop looseness because, again, it's going to be hitting those tracks on the ratcheted joint. And same thing can also be applied when it comes to the legs, which, again, we'll look more at the articulation in a second. Let's talk now about the figure's posability. And, of course, like we did before, we'll start with Violator's head sculpt, which is actually a separate part from the rest of his torso. It's attached by a ball joint, but it's a little harder to get access to it. You sort of have to hold it from the sides. You really do want to resist the urge of holding the head from the bottom to lift it up and down because, of course, you're putting pressure on the joint for the jaw and you really don't want to break that off. Instead, I find it helps to hold it from the side. Now, you can rotate it this way, and that seems to be really it. You can also do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, there's a lot of resistance simply just because there's so much sculpting going on here. You can also lift the head up, and you can also lift the head or tilt the head down. And that's it. Again, I don't mind the fact that they had to really limit the amount of posability, at least on the head end of things, because at least it does keep the head sculpt consistent with the rest of the body. I mean, yes, you can see the dividing line right here where the head is clearly a separate part from the rest of his body, but at least it looks pretty fluent when it comes to the sculpting. Now, of course, we've already looked at the fact that the jaw does drop down. You can have it almost flush to his body or like myself, I prefer to have the jaw up. You can also lift it up as well. Looking now at his shoulders, the shoulders hinge out to almost a 45 degree angle bend. You can also take the arms and rotate them all the way around. While I am kind of looking at 
a violator here. It kind of reminds me of a rancor, at least the body, not necessarily the head. Um, as for the elbows, the elbows do have a hinge, so you can bend the elbow that way, and you can also rotate the forearm back and forth. Just again, the amount of sculpting that they put in this is, is super crazy. As for the hands themselves, you can rotate the hands all the way around. Mindful, of course, of all the spikes that are on his hand. They're awfully prickly. You can also hinge the hands back and forth this way. Uh, upper torso. Now, here's the thing. Upper torso is on a ball joint. Again, a little more, little more luxury than what you could get from the head, but still, you feel there's a bit of resistance when you're trying to remove the torso. Now, his lower abdomen. It's the only part I really don't like too much about the figure. To give you the extra clearance of being able to crunch the torso down like this, what they had to unfortunately do is leave a gap space right here where then the lower half of the figure's body is basically just softer rubber, but they did have to leave a gap there in order for the abdomen to be able to crunch forward. And it doesn't really crunch forward too much either. Let me just spin this around so you can see it from the backside here. The, head, the top torso does move back and it does move forward. It doesn't seem as bad on the back, although there are a few little gaps here, but again, they had to put that in there be able to give you as much of the mileage that you can get out of the articulation. So yeah, there is some gaps here on the back. There's of course that very visible gap down below here. If you look at it straight forward though, you're not really going to be noticing it. Then for the legs, the legs go forward and the legs go back. You can also split the legs out. There's ratcheted joints working right underneath all that sculpting there. The figure does have a bend at the knee, which so far isn't loose. Because of course, if it's going to start developing looseness in the lower knees, that's going to cause the figure to start falling over. But so far, knock on wood, the joints are pretty tight on the knees. Then for the feet, the feet do have a swivel. There's a swivel here on the back. I guess where his ankle would be. You can also hinge those up as well. If you want to have a higher standing violator, you can do that as well. And the same thing basically works for the foot area too. There's a hinge joint right there. There's an ankle pivot too, so there really there's a lot of articulation happening here for Violator. Uh, one certainly a lot of things going well for this guy is he's got a, just one of the best sculpts I think I've seen for a McFarlane toy figure. Again, when I I certainly can understand that when it comes to his own figures, McFarlane is really going to go all out, all the bells and whistles. Even though technically the figure doesn't have much in the way of accessories, he really only has again a bit of a laughable display stand. Which ironically enough, now I'm having. Oh, there we go. I'm having a bit of a tough time getting the figure stand. But again, once you get those feet leveled and flat, the figure has no real problem standing. He's a very elaborate looking sculpted figure. Big, bulky, the way that, well, normally Violator wouldn't have been that in the past, but the way he certainly is now. A big, bulky sculpted figure. Tons of cool paint applications. Slightly laughable display stand. But it's about the only thing I really have a flaw, a fault with when it comes to the brand new released Violator from the folks over at McFarlane Toys. Now, I've never been that kind of channel that does the best figures of the year. Top 10 favorite figures of that year. But you got to believe, if I was one of those channels pretty high on that list, I would put the new Spawn Violator figure. I mean, just look at the size of this guy alone and factor in the amount of sculpting that they've done from the top of his horn to the bottom of his rather gross-looking feet. It's incredible the amount of work that they've put into this guy. Now, McFarlane has been very successful with sculpting the other lines that their company is producing, but you got to feel that in-house figures like the Spawn and all the characters related to Spawn get that extra little bit of love. And you can clearly see not only just a little bit of love, but a lot of love was put into their brand new Violator. It's surprising, actually, how much articulation this guy has packing. Uh, it suffers a bit, certainly, around the mid-torso area because it results in leaving a gap in order to accommodate that ab crunch. But outside of that, and slightly a laughable little display stand, that little display stand, is it looks like he's just stepping on a Frisbee. Other than that, though, I mean, this, it's just a, it's just an incredible looking violator. My soft spot, there's still a soft spot, I think, for that classic series of Violator 3 that we, well, I did use for comparisons. And I might even still down the road do a re-review of that guy because I, I just love the look of that violator. But the fact that this guy just towers over that older violator figure, again, has as much sculpting as it does, pretty good paint applications and super articulated it's a fantastic figure that if you are a fan of Spawn and the Violator like I am, you may want to be picking this one up and adding it to your collection right away. Now, this figure I end up picking up over on Entertainment Earth. 
I found they were actually one of the more affordable places to get the new Spawn figures, and I wouldn't believe, I was surprised to see how fast they shipped this stuff to my doorstep. If you guys would be interested in picking up the Violator for yourself, I'll provide the link down below to at least where I picked it up at, over on Entertainment Earth. And while you're also over there, you can also check out the other figures and collectibles that they have for sale. Today, again, once, once again, we were having a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys Spawn, the Violator. Just a uh, incredible figure. Probably, yeah, top 10. Top 10 for this year so far. What do you guys think of this figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And hey now, if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying all the content you're seeing, hit that subscribe button down below. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't postpone what you can accomplish today. Make sure as well you turn on that bell notification. So yeah, you get those friendly little reminders of whenever new videos are going to be popping up. And just an FYI, just a 411L whisper in your ear. There are going to be more Spawn figure reviews coming your way in the not so distant future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.